it's been a minute since we had any sort of drama in gaming. Of course, we have covered all the drama surrounding the PlayStation, the Xbox, all the boo-boo that made in the past few weeks. But then, you know, it, it started to calm down a little bit, right? But today, guys, uh-oh, we got another one of these, man. Like the video if you think there are two genders. Dislike the video if you think there are 5,000 genders, okay? I want to know where you at. Because, again, there is another chin warfare happening you know the simple jawline simple chin thing right yeah exactly so there's warfare happening with chin gamers are not happy i want to get right into it apparently brock lesnar is also brought into the news as well yay look at that brock lesnar jawline man like yeah it, it's like it's looking almost the same bro like holy crap what the hell is going on in gaming like the video if you think there are two genders just like if you think there are five thousand genders i roll it and recently, Xbox had a showcase of games that was actually pretty good, all things considered. There was a variety of titles shown, however, I couldn't help but notice as I watched that some of these trailers that the women, especially, almost unanimously across the board, they were ugly, deliberately on purpose. What the hell is happening exactly in the modern gaming industry? So, let's talk yeah. about Dragon Age, Perfect yeah. Dark, Star Wars... Yeah, 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 But, yo, I gotta be honest, bro, that boy is looking kinda handsome, actually, right? Like... Yeah, boy is looking handsome. Of course, the Acolyte news later on and some other stuff. To start, let's go with Dragon Age because I got a real burning opinion on all of this. In case uh -oh. you don't know, Dragon Age Dreadwolf uh -oh. is now called the Veil Guard, which is not a good title change. At the very least, they should have named it Dragon Age Veil Guard. But beyond this already eyebrow-raising change came the very first actual trailer for the game showcasing its companions. And pretty much every single companion is some form of diversity checklisting of some kind, from a brown woman with mechanical legs which checks the person of color and disabled boxes. Man, they even got a brown woman represented? Where is my representation at, bro? What a brown man like me gotta do to get its representation? Where is my representation at, bro? What a brown man gotta do? As a brown man, I demand to be represented as uh, represented in the game as well, bro. Bruh. An Asian elf woman who looks like they got modern audience in the face, a black elven gray warden, and even an old white guy necromancer. Look, I'm going to be real with you guys like always. I've been a lifelong Dragon Age fan. I've 100%ed Origins on the Xbox 360 back in the day, and I've played that a dozen times. I beat Dragon Age 2 a few times too, and I've platinumed Inquisition on PS4. I love the Dragon Age series, and this trailer, with my whole chest, I will say this, it made me feel absolutely nothing but sheer apathy. I didn't okay. recognize the world that I grew up with whatsoever when I saw this trailer. Comparing this to the early Dragon Damn. Age games, it felt more like I was watching a Marvel Fortnite crossover event for Dragon Age than anything else. I read a comment, one guy actually came out and said that Disney used to touch our hearts. Back in the days, Disney used to touch our hearts, now they touch us inappropriately. <laughs> And if you think I'm making this up, let me actually show you this right here. Yeah, this one. Shout out to Jonathan. Uh, Disney, yeah, okay, let me actually zoom out like that. I have to zoom out a lot. Disney used to touch our hearts, now they touch us inappropriately. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, that's all I know, man. Jonathan going crazy right now, bro. Like, if this was a trailer for Fortnite bringing Dragon Age characters into their world, I would be totally fine with it because that's the vibe that I got from this. Everything was looking cartoonish and very goofy, over-exaggerated even if you will at times. It does look like Dragon Age Inquisition concept art that was brought to life, and I felt like everything in the trailer was heavily influenced by the designs of those Tarot cards in Inquisition. If you've okay. never played that game, each companion had a set of cards that changed based on their relationship to the main character. They were very visually striking, and each card had this over-exaggerated, almost whimsical look, which was fine by the way. But it was uh -huh. a stylistic uh -huh. choice that didn't actually influence the art style of the world, and in my opinion, the way Inquisition looked as in its characters, worlds, and enemies was a direction that I liked the series going in. It had a very mm. slight, cartoony-esque slant to its design, but it was very uh -oh. subtle. Like, it was slightly stylized. And for a man, you cannot even see the chin, bro. <laughs> She's coming out and be like, I'm strong, I'm independent, look at my chin, look at my jawline, look at my jawline, I am strong, I'm independent. Man, like, if you put Brock Lesnar side by side, like, holy <laughs> holy crap, bro, what the hell, it's like a perfect match. In some instances, it feels like that. She has a better jawline than Brock Lesnar because, you know, Brock Lesnar, like, e -e -e, you know, he's a man, you know, he's wrong. If you're a man, you're wrong, wrong. right? You, you ever heard that saying? Yeah, they always say men are always wrong. Men are always just manipulating, right? Like, look at that. I mean, am I wrong? Tell me when I'm telling lies. Tell me when I'm telling lies, bruh. I sound like blame truth right now, but... It's in order to differentiate it from, say, Skyrim or anything else at the time. Witcher 3, for example, came out a year after Inquisition 2. 
but it still looked realistic-esque, and I really dug that look a lot. I also just don't find the cast here of Veilguard. I mean, his jawline ain't even that good, bro, in comparison. This is a perfect jawline. Like, look at- man, I feel like that you guys don't understand. Yeah, now you understand how with this ambiance here. This chin, this chin. Bruh. Like, what- what we doing here? Of course, this chin is not that bad, but... Like, this chin is just perfect. This is like work of art right there. I'm crying, man. I wish I had this strong of a jawline too, bro. I don't have that good of a jawline, guys. I mean, it's it's all right. It's all right. But, but like, you know, this is just uh, perfect. This is the perfect jawline any man wishes to have. Hard to be very visually interesting at all to me either. And that it comes down to a few... Uh, did they put lip gloss on my boy? things which is one yes the art style change but also the fact that the entire cast just looks like that they were made for a modern audience speaking mm. of that i want to show you another game that kind of also proves what i'm saying that was shown in the same showcase so we also have the perfect dark reboot coming and gameplay wise uh -oh. i would say the game actually looks fun like a cool mix of perfect dark meets dishonored meets deus ex i have no qualms with the actual gameplay that was depicted everything yeah. about the trailer was honestly getting me interested in this reboot until the game decided until to show off the main character uh -oh. which i immediately had mary jane yeah, spider-man yeah, 2 yeah, via yeah, 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 bro no look at that she just comes oh. out so strong bro it's like the wind just like the wind flows do, 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 do. you know it's it's just crazy she comes out like looking that strong to show off the main character which Damn, she was flying i immediately had mary jane she was flying though and she gets like that the helmet off like oh hey, that's that's like pretty good, good. spider-man 2 vietnam flashbacks as soon as they showed it yeah. This reveal <laughs> immediately made me almost forget about oh everything God. else around it, and suddenly I started seeing in pretty much every trailer that Xbox was showing that they all had oh women man. in it from a Western uh. studio standpoint anyways. I keep hearing the same phrase in my head over and over as I continue to watch. All of these games, these ugly women with their square jaws, vaguely feminine features, they were all being made for the modern audience. And I suddenly felt as I was watching a showcase showing games meant for players that I was no longer being shown stuff that was being meant to excite me in order to play them. I felt abandoned by everything that I was seeing, as if suddenly the entire industry had just evolved overnight into a new direction. That it had been slowly over time evolving like a caterpillar in a cocoon, but instead what emerged was an ugly, rancid future that made me more worried than anything else. The game industry has been overtaken by activists, we know this already, but in various ways it feels as if their agenda has been stemmed from time to time. And we keep having examples showing that their mindset and way of making things is not working. Remember that recently Warner Bros. confirmed that Rocksteady has yeah. gone from being a premier game studio that made Batman Arkham games and following their Suicide Squad flop? They are now apparently a support studio that's helping Avalanche- There we go. Bum, 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 bum. Why y'all suckers do something like that, man? Why you disappoint your fans this way, bro? Like, these Sega's could have made a good game. I, I remember when we uh, had our first ever trailer for, for a game like, uh, uh, for this uh, squad game. I cannot say certain words. This is why I'm like actively trying to nerf it or uh, censor it. Because, uh, yeah, one time I said it and YouTube just uh, uh, age gated the video because uh, they thought that I was talking about like the real thing. Meanwhile, it's a game, man. But, but yeah, they, I saw the first trailer of this game. And I was really, really intrigued. It did look good. Even though it was CGI, I was like, yeah, it's CGI. I don't want to let my dogs out. And I still never let my dogs out, okay? I never let my dogs out. But deep down, I was kind of excited. I was like, okay, this game is going to be good, right? It, it looks sick. But that was, I believe, all the way back in 2022 or 2021. I I'm talking about the first ever reveal, right? After that, we learned, quickly learned, not quickly, but like year or two, two years later, we learned the fact that it was going to be a live service game that's when all hope was lost then we learned that it was also going woke and all that and now we're figuring out that they're they're kind of like in a way shutting down we had this rumor shutting down now i guess uh we're learning that they're not necessarily shutting down which is okay fair but they're becoming a support studio bro they're becoming a support studio why y'all suckers listen to these activists that are not even gamers that hate gamers that want your product to fail first of all why y'all suck is listening to them just make the games for your for the gamers just make the games for your target audience just make the games for your fans you know your fans uh, you have the blueprint we're talking about rocksteady here made batman arkham the way they're going the way they're going right now 
it feels like that Batman in the next game is probably not even gonna have a nutsack. It's gonna be a she. It's gonna be a she, her. Batman, I am strong, I'm independent. Dee -hee. You know, it feels like that. Uh, that's the route they're 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 going, bro. What the hell is going on? I, I don't even know if they're gonna make a Batman game now because they're turning out to be a support studio, bro. And to make a Hogwarts Legacy Director's Cut Edition. You know how humiliating and pathetic it is to go from a studio that was considered the head of the publisher when it came to making things to being relegated to side support? But what can you expect when your terrible game lost over 200 million dollars? Oh of course, God. recently Jason Schreier had an article about Suicide Squad flopping and he talked to the devs there anonymously. I read the whole thing, I won't read you his article, but to summarize it, pretty much the vision of Suicide Squad just kept changing behind the scenes. And the developer, who was known for single player games like Bioware as well, was suddenly thrusted into making this always online live service offering instead. Mm. Which also mm. happened to Bioware, I mean go look mm. at Anthem and how that all turned out. The problem here is that beyond women just being made ugly on purpose in games which is apparently being done to avert the male gaze because they don't want to cater to men anymore, which is insane to me because the majority of the people who buy and play games are men just kind of already tells you that we are out of alignment here. None of this shit is going to work well at all. I mean, beyond the perfect dark with a crimson chin jaw protagonist, we also have the travesty in Dragon Age with that Kunari companion. I kid you not, I showed my girlfriend the Kunari companion and she thought it was a man. We are Damn. cooked, dude. If women Damn. like my girlfriend can't even properly identify something as their own Say you swear to God, bro. Say you swear to God. Nah, bro. You 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 just exaggerating, man. You exaggerating. If that if that's real, holy crap, man. We got a chin warfare happening in 2024, bruh. I mean, bruh. bruh. Own sex? What are we even doing here, guys? Hey, my yo. girlfriend can't even properly identify something as their own sex? What are we even doing here, guys? Like, really? You know things are messed up when Baldur's Gate 3 looks more like Dragon Age than Dragon Age itself. The series was always a gritty dark fantasy RPG. I mean, if you go back to the original trailers for Origins, the game was marketed as a dark fantasy. It even... I think they took that seriously. I think right now it's really, really gonna be dark. You know, with that jawline, it's gonna be gritty though. It, it's gonna be dark. It already is dark. Uh, dragon, dark chin age. Yeah. Even had Marilyn Manson music playing in the background. I dragon, the dark age chin. Okay, that that I, I think that should be the title of the Look game. at this new trailer. And I don't recognize Dragon Age anymore. The irreversible damage that the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Fortnite has had on the entire spectrum of entertainment as a medium, it needs to be studied. Because everything is going for this hyper-stylized look now. Valorant, yeah, Overwatch, Fortnite, Apex, you name it, they're all going for this. Yeah, I, I agree. I totally agree. But a lot of people nowadays are blaming Fortnite for it. I totally understand where everybody's coming from. And of course, like, I see uh, your guys' comments as well. And more often than not, whenever we have a topic like this, people are always like, yeah, Fortnite ruined gaming. I understand where everybody's coming from, but I don't. Personally, I don't blame Fortnite. Hear me out, hear me out. Because Fortnite did th that, whatever they did, they did it for their own franchise. It just happens to be that everybody started copying them. You know, they could have chose to not copy them. They could have chose to not copy them. But of course, the reason they're copying them is because Fortnite has been successful. This what uh, what happens when uh, you do that. This is like a... Uh, and every copy is a piss poor copy. It's never gonna be... Fortnite level and people play Fortnite for a specific reason people don't want to play other games beca uh, Because they love Fortnite they want to play other games because they love that game for example Call of Duty Call of Duty of course they have toyed around with Fortnite and they still uh, do a lot of that with the wacky skins But you know one day for, for example Warzone Warzone is still its own thing, but surely inspired off of Fortnite don't get me wrong, right? But it still has the DNA of Call of Duty in a way, but if Tomorrow, Warzone becomes truly 100% like Fortnite. Of course, people are gonna hate it. People are gonna hate it. People are gonna be like, yo, what the hell is that? We got Fortnite. If I wanna play Fortnite, I'll go play Fortnite. I'm playing Warzone or Call of Duty because it's Call of Duty. Y you know what I mean, right? So, and of course, like Activision has uh, copied Fortnite like crazy. This is why the multiplayer of Call of Duty is suffering right now. You know, the multiplayer always dies back in the days. The multiplayer was always the the front and center. Th this is what happens when you try to copy somebody else and you do a piss poor job at it. Uh, and, and I understand why people are saying Fortnite ruined the gaming in a way it did, but I don't blame Fortnite. I blame the the studios and the publishers that tried 
to f copy Fortnite and everybody is going for that style. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. And now single player RPG games are trying to chase the people who thoughts? like those sorts of styles with their games. Uh, agree, disagree, I want to know your thoughts for sure. Games. And all it's doing is alienating the fans who've been waiting, mind you, 10 goddamn years for a proper new Dragon Age game. I also Ten talked years? to my Bioware contact about all of this. This contact no. has worked on both the Mass Effect trilogy and the Dragon Age games. And they told me that they found internally that every Dragon Age game that had been made always had new creative leads and art directors. And apparently every art director wanted to put their own spin on the next Dragon Age. This is why every okay. game in the series has a slight variation in its artistic look. I mean, just look at Dragon Age 2 compared to Inquisition. They look very different. Actually, Veilguard looks a lot like Dragon Age 2 the more I look at it, which is not a good thing, mind you, because DA2 is considered to be easily the worst game in the series, which I agree with. My contact told me that most of Bioware, even to this day, are people who just keep their opinions to themselves just in order to keep their jobs. Dang. And most of them don't say what they really think because they would likely be fired if they spoke yeah. out, which already tells me that Bioware likely has a very small minority of people. Man, it, 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 it's quite telling, right? Like, they want to believe in more than two genders, which is like, fair. I, I personally don't believe in more than two genders, right? You know what I mean? But I, I believe the, the, the idea and I believe the fact that everybody has uh, their own opinion and everybody has right to their opinion as long as it's not hurting anybody, right? Uh, refusal to, refusing to participate, refusal to participate is not harassment, okay? First of all, you can believe what, what you want to believe, but don't make other people believe what you believe is right, okay? When scientifically, biologically speaking, it's not correct. But hey, yeah, freedom, right? Freedom. Uh, what's it called? Democracy, right? Like everybody has right to having an opinion. But th that see, that's the thing that's going on. Uh, they want to believe in multiple genders, but they cannot believe in two different opinions. Or yeah, I'm. We're not even talking about believing in ten different opinions. It's just like two different opinions, right? Yeah, these sickers don't want to believe into that. I I believe. They have the right to believing in like more than two genders if they want to believe in that, right? Everybody got the right to believe what they want to believe as long as they're not hurting anybody. But, but like, yeah, I guess it, it, it'll be what it be. I, I, I guess it's true. I guess it's true. I'm sure some devs are working on it. They don't like it, but they, what, what are, what are they gonna do? Like, get fired from the job? Absolutely not. They, I, I, I don't. Yeah, like I don't want them getting fired. Some of you will be like, nah, man, they should speak their mind. I mean, tough love, bro. In real life, it doesn't work like that, bro. It don't work like that, man. They also got a family. They, 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 I'm sure for some people it's probably a dream job as well to work at these studios. So yeah, they don't want to get fired from their job. Absolutely. Oh, who are you gonna pay their bills? Yeah, exactly. Nobody, uh, none of us are gonna pay their bills, right? We're barely getting by. I mean, some of you are definitely like oil prints out there, right? Making that moolah, making the moolah. But generally speaking, like most people are just getting by, and, and the devs that are working on these games. Yeah, bro, like, it's their job. I, they, they cannot speak on it. If they do, guess what? They're gonna get fired. People who oversee and control... It, it tells you what's happening and what's going on. ...everything with a precision knife, which is not a good thing, mind you. Also, according to my contact, Matt Goldman is now the creative director for Dragon Age, who took over from another guy named Neil Thompson before. So each game is like a dick measuring contest for whoever is in charge, pretty much. My contact also confirmed that Bioware was pushing for DEI even back during the Inquisition days. Although according to them, Bioware was not as hell-bent about these things like they are now, but they did tell me that Mike Gamble, the director of the next Mass Effect game, is actually pretty based in private and also doesn't have his pronouns listed in his bio on Twitter, which as of the making of this video anyway, he doesn't. So Mass Effect, at the very least, is being led by someone that according to my contact is not 100% with the DEI stuff. Okay. And might actually okay. be a real game developer that wants to make a great game. But in Dragon Age's case, the game director there is a transgender person named Corinne Bush. Remember Corinne said this via the Bioware blog back in 2022 and I quote, as a queer trans woman, I have a perspective on the games that not everyone has. Dragon Age has long been a place where LGBTQIA plus folks can see people like themselves represented respectfully. It's oh inherently oh very queer, and it's such a rare thing for marginalized communities to have representation where we feel proud and powerful in how we are depicted. Yeah. It's so deeply meaningful for so many. I often get emotional when I think about what it have meant for a younger version of myself to see someone like her in a game and as a hero no less. I hope we can be a safe space for our queer players to know they are not alone and they are brilliant and worthy and that they are not only welcome but celebrated. Game directors are sometimes thought of as big personalities who are singularly responsible for the purity of their creative vision. But for me, it's really about being a it's over. steward it's for over. the vision that we as a team have collectively defined. I get a high-level view of everything as it's coming together and can steer the project as it does. 
But okay. ultimately, it's about empowering people to work together, play with ideas, offer critiques, and make decisions, all to help create a cohesive experience for the player. In Dragon Age... Uh, unless you are against the chin. If you don't like the chin, we're not gonna hear your ideas. You can go pound sand. This is what's going on, man. What the <laughs> you, There's like entire warfare happening on Twitter right now. People are talking about this crap. Man, it's funny, y'all. It, it's funny. It's sad. It's hilarious uh, at the same time. I want to know your thoughts. Check out this video on the screen because we recently had this drama uh, as well. With uh, uh, Yeah, apparently Activision has banned these folks from their events not from the game but from the events right check out this video on the screen because they were speaking out against this crap that's happening so yeah they also got banned in a way on the left though we had some good news yeah i'll put some good news video right there yeah check check out both of these videos and i'll see you right there